All right, we're back and we're talking about podcast editing. How do you edit your podcast and how do you make it sound good? My name is Lainey Sullivan and I have Carrie Green with us today and we are going to just dive right in. Hi, Carrie. How are you? I am doing great, Lainey. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And we're just going to dive right in. All right. What is sure. podcast editing? Well, editing technically is anything that you do to the audio after you've hit the stop button. Uh, it could be cutting out ums and ums. It could be uh, taking out the dog that's barking in the background, optimizing the audio, anything like that. That's that's essentially what we mean when we talk about editing. All right. So when we're talking about editing, there I know there's a lot of tools on the market. What are our best tools? Are there, you know, should we look at be looking at pricing? Should we be looking at effectiveness? What's our, you know, how should we look at our editing tools? Sure. Well, that you're right. There are tons of things on the market that you can use. Some of the best ones that I found, believe it or not, are free. Uh, GarageBand, which comes on almost every Mac that is purchased, is a is an excellent source. I guess it's not free because you bought a computer to get it, but but it's free is in terms of not having to buy more software. Uh, there's another that you can use on PC or Mac. It's called Audacity. And in my podcast production business, my whole team uses Audacity. It's just a very powerful program for doing the sort of thing that we're talking about, where you have to edit things that are that are in an existing audio track. And Audacity, you said, is free, right? So that's yeah. easy. Yeah, absolutely free. All right. And then if, if you didn't want to deal with free, I know there's we've got Adobe, right? And that's a little more expensive. Yeah, but yeah. Adobe Audition is quite a bit more expensive than free. Uh, I think it's probably 200 bucks or so. I've never I've never priced it because I've never needed it. But, but it does have more bells and whistles. And if you want to get really fancy schmancy, that's the way to go. But it's just really not necessary, it sounds like. I don't believe so. I mean, we do professional quality audio for every one of our clients, and it comes out great with Audacity. Okay. Well, that's good to know. So you guys don't have to spend a lot of money to get your podcast edited. All right. So I know you've got a free tool. Is um, Where can we find or a free resource? Where can we find that at? Yeah, I've got a, a, a little, uh, I guess it's a PDF that I put together that's asking some important questions as to should you edit your episodes or not. And you can find that at podcastfasttrack.com slash editing. And it'll take you right to the PDF that you can download. All right, you guys, we're going to put that URL down in the description below so you can click on that or you can check on the YouTube card up above and make sure that you download that PDF from Carrie. All right, so let's talk about the dog barking, the truck passing, giggling kicks, and all those things. Should we really be that nitpicky with those, you know, those little blooper moments or those little interruptions with our podcast? Yeah, well, there's two things that I think you really need to consider to answer that question. One is what you want your show to be like. Uh, there are some people who, because of their niche or because of the particular audience that they know that they're going to attract, don't really care about all that stuff. They think the casual is better and that it's less work, and so that's that's really what they want to do. Now, there are others who are doing a podcast as a form of authority building or getting their name out into the niche as an expert in the field and they want it to sound professional, and, and I personally can't blame them. You want to put your best foot forward, as they all have always said. You don't get a second chance to make a first impression. So sometimes that, you know, I think of it as A-grade a movies and B-grade movies. You know, you, you, you go to an A-grade movie, and you see a wonderful thing, and you tell everybody about it. If you go to a B-grade movie, you kind of do the same thing, only it's negative. And so I don't want my podcast to sound B-grade. I want everybody to have reason to tell other people, man, this is a great show. So in that sense, I edit out those things and I recommend that to most people. All right. Awesome. So you guys just pay attention to what your audience is because that's what it's really all about, right? Is what yeah. is your audience, you know, basically taking from you and, and what they like and what they're listening to. Okay. So I talk really fast. And I know there's other people in this world that do podcasts that talk really fast, but there's others that, you know, they don't talk so fast. So how does it work with speeding up a clip? Is it necessary? How do we decide if we should speed it up? You know, because I might sound like a chipmunk if you speed me up too much. Yeah. And I think that's your main problem with speeding up audio is you're going to change the oct or the, the note so to speak, of the voice, and it's going to increase that frequency so that it can very much sound like a chipmunk, even for a person who has a lower tone voice. Uh, I don't usually recommend speeding up clips if you're going to, for the production's sake. I mean, if you're if you're putting out a final product, 
you know, speeding up the clip is to me is just a little hokey. It doesn't always sound very good. Uh, you know, one way that you can use a speed changing thing, and that's in your actual editing process, is like Audacity, for instance, has a thing called play at speed. And you can turn it up to a faster speed and listen for the sections that you want to edit out. That way you're able to edit your audio, uh, say 30 minutes of audio in 15 minutes, because you're able to listen to it twice as fast. And that's given that you're able to listen to it twice as fast. So uh, I don't recommend speeding up audio. If you just do good editing of taking out blanks and ums and ums and, and, and are careful about context and how it sounds in the flow, uh, you, can, you can edit down a person who is a slow speaker and make them sound like a fast speaker even when they're not. Oh, I like that. All right, that's really good information. All right, so what about pitch level, guys? A lot of guys have deeper voices. A lot of girls have higher pitch voices. Does pitch really matter um, in a podcast? And do can we do we need to change it? Do we need to worry about the pitch? I say no. I think it just you just need to be yourself. The folks who are coming to get your information come at least in part because it's your information. They like you. They want what you've got to offer. Part of that is your voice. Part of that is your persona. And I know a lot of people hate to listen to themselves on a recording, but hey, get used to it. I remember Pat Flynn, one of the biggest names in podcasting out there now, he says he hated how he sounded when he first started. And I understand that. Pat's got kind of a, you know, an architect voice because he was an architect. And, and but, you know, everybody's gotten used to it. Everybody loves Pat and Pat is Pat and, and we love him for it. So I would say don't worry about that at all. Perfect. All right, guys. So just accept your voice the way it is, right? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So if we are changing, you know, the overall, if we're not changing our, you know, speed, we're not changing our voice. What about the overall sound quality? So, um, so right now I'm in a big room, but I have wood floors. So I had to put some padding down, make sure that the audio sounded actually pretty decent without sounding like I'm in a tin can or a bathroom. How can somebody make sure that they don't sound like they're in the bathroom when they're recording? Yeah, well, the very first thing is to make sure that whatever it is that's capturing your voice is good quality, and that's your microphone. So, you know, every laptop comes with a built-in microphone, and they're okay, but they're usually not very good quality when it comes to recording professional audio. So you want to get yourself a, a good microphone that can pick up your voice well. This one that I'm using is an Audio-Technica. It costs, I think, $85, which is not much at all. They have another one that's kind of a sibling to this one that is I think $65 and both of them plug into your USB port so you can just plug straight into your computer record on Audacity or GarageBand and you're good to go for a pretty small amount of money. And Lenny, I, I know you use a, a Blue Yeti, is that what you use? I actually use Blue Nessie. Yep. Blue Nessie, okay yeah Blue makes really good pretty affordable microphones as well. They do. And one other, one other little tip and this has to do with your room, uh, anything you can put in the room that will absorb sound is going to help. So couches, uh, I used my first podcasting studio was in a walk-in closet that we had, so all the clothes absorbed sound really, really well. Made for a great sounding podcast. Uh, I can also send you a link, Lenny, of a guy on YouTube who's created this little portable uh, vocal booth, is what he calls it, that he puts his microphone inside of, and it's he's got before and after uh, clips of his voice. It's just incredible the difference that this one little thing that cost him ten bucks actually actually makes in his recording. It's, and that's amazing. I so want to get that. So um, yes, please put that link in there. And you guys will make sure that that is there for you as well. Because that's if you just a little thing that's 10 or 20 bucks, that can make a huge difference oh, yeah. to your podcast. And again, it goes back to your audience. So all right, so we're on an HOA, right? So we're on a hang on on air, but recording on an HOA versus recording, say, directly into Adobe or into um, Audacity, what is the difference in what is preferred when you're doing a podcast? Well, if you can record direct into your recording software, that's always advisable because it, it, it enables you to have less steps in the process in between your original source and your, and your capturing device. Uh, a Hangout on Air, you're in a, in a sense doing that. You're, you're speaking through a microphone into Google Hangout and it's recording for you. However, you have the transmission of airwaves, you know, going across whatever it's got to go across to get to the Google servers and record. That That is part of it. And you'll hear that on Hangouts where there's a, a little glitch and you hear a voice stutter and that kind of thing. A good editor can fix most of that for you, but it won't always be the case. Uh, there are a couple of pieces of software uh, that are coming out right now. I mean, as we speak, they're like in their beta process that do this an amazing thing where 
you can get two people on uh, the software at the same time. One has it on their computer, the other has it on theirs. They each record and it records on their side of the conversation. So my voice is recorded here, your voice is recorded there, and it uploads them to the cloud, syncs them, and then you download them together. And so you're getting first quality audio on both sides of the recording. It's really an incredible thing. One of them is a computer software piece. Another is an app that's coming out for phones. So pretty soon, this is gonna be a non-issue if people are willing to spend a little bit of money to buy the software. Wow, that's really cool. Okay, so I'm gonna to be totally stalking you because I'm sure that you're gonna make sure that people know about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I can uh, I can send you links to both of those. They're they're both still yeah. in development, but I think one of them, the app one, actually, I think has a trial version out right now that you can download and try out with people. So I'll I'll send you links to those. Perfect. That's awesome. Uh, and you guys, this is amazing. And this is these are the things that you need to know when you're doing podcasting. So, so. Uh, but, Basically, it sounds like recording into your your um, software rather than through the Hangout is really your best choice if you're going to just do podcasting. But if you're doing the video and the and the audio, then you want to have a, a program that does both. So yeah, exactly. And one of the problems with Audacity is it only allows one line in at a time, so you can't record uh, from. Uh, a phone call into Audacity and get your voice on there at the same time. It'll be one or the other. So what you have to do in that case is have a little mixer board where everything comes into the mixer first, Skype call maybe, your voice maybe, some music maybe, and then the final product comes out of the mixer into your recorder, which can be a digital recorder or Audacity, something like that. Okay, so that's really cool. All right, so when we're editing out, we, and we kind of touched on it with the apps that you were talking about, but when before the apps come out and they make our lives easier, what happens when we're trying to edit out two different people, right? So you've got your voice, you've got my voice, and I've got all this background noise. Is it easy? Can you edit out the separate voices? And should you? And is it easy or not? Yeah, the, the really clear answer for that one, Lainey, is it depends. Uh, it depends on how it's recorded in the first place. Uh, a Google Hangout is going to give you audio that is all mixed together. So for me to cut background noise out of your side of the recording is virtually impossible. There are effects you can do using Audition or Audacity that will minimize that, but it also can, doesn't have to, but can minimize some of the voice as well. So you have to be real careful about the settings that you use on that. You know, if you use something like Skype Call Recorder or, or other, excuse me, or other things like that, uh, they usually record in separate tracks, and you can set it to record in separate tracks. So you can split that out, remove all the background noise in, in my side of the conversation, and then put them back together and have no issue. Or say you had a dog barking in your background and I didn't, but the dog's barking right where I'm speaking. Well, if they're split, I can take that dog out of your side and no one would ever know that it's there. Uh, that's really cool. And this is where you guys need to really connect with your podcast editors or just hire them to do it for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So love music in a podcast, you know, we get you have the intros and the outros, but should people have music in their podcast? And I've heard it both, you know, I've heard music in podcasts and personally, I'm not a fan. So what's your take on that? Yeah, again, I think it depends on the feel you're wanting for your podcast. Uh, many people think that music intros or outros are helpful in that they're like a radio show and it's something people are familiar with. And so they, they want to have that. They feel more professional. But really, if your main goal is just to get content out there and you know how to do that well, uh, an intro and an outro may be a distraction to your audience because your audience may be that type that's just, you know, just give me the facts. Just, just get there. Uh, I've listened to both podcasts that have the music and don't, and some I really enjoy the music because of the way they do it, and others I don't because it's just way too long and it takes up too much time. In fact, on my pod player on my phone, I've got five or six podcasts like that set so that they start 30 seconds in, and I don't have to listen to all that stuff. It just skips it all and starts right where the content typically is. So it's it's really a matter of taste, but one other thing I would say about music is if you're going to use music, Make sure you have the rights to use that music, which typically means you need to buy it, pay for it, make sure it's it's yours to be used forever. Uh, I can put you in contact with people who can do that for you if you need it, but don't just take your favorite song off a CD and throw that into your podcast. You might wind up getting sued if you do that. 
Yeah, that might be bad form, yeah. definitely, just a little bit. All right, so as we wrap up, what is the most important thing that podcasters should do when they're you know, setting up their podcast in, with editing in mind? Yeah, I think there's two things. Number one is keep your audience in mind. You need to speak in a style. You need to produce a kind of show that your audience is going to gain value from, obviously. You don't want to put something out there that they're going to listen to for five minutes and say, oh, what is this junk, you know, and then get rid of it. Your podcast should build your brand, not detract from it. So that's number one. Number two on the editing side is if you're going to do editing, you need to keep in mind uh, the, the reality of how people speak. I mean, for example, I just paused a little bit. I just stuttered over some words. That's pretty natural. If you go through and cut out too much, you'll make your podcast sound really stilted and wooden and even robotic uh, to a sense. So you want to leave some spacing. You want to leave some flow to make it natural because you want it to be easy for your end listener to listen to. And if it's robotic or they have to strain to listen real hard because it's all crammed together, you, you're going to lose listeners rather than gain listeners. And so you want to be real careful with your editing. And that's why really I created the company that I did is because I've, I'm practiced at it. I know how to do it. And a lot of people don't have the time, aren't interested. And so, so hey, I'll be glad to take that work for them. Perfect. And you just did a perfect lead into where do we connect with you at? Where do we find you, Carrie? You know, well, my website is podcastfasttrack.com and you can reach me at Carrie, C-A-R-E-Y at podcastfasttrack.com. I always answer my own email. Perfect. And you have um, some Audacity tutorials, I think, right? Yeah, I sure do. I've got a, a website that's got some free Audacity tutorials. It's, it's called freeaudacitytutorials.com. And then there's also a course that I've created specifically about editing for podcasters, which is called uh, Audacity for Podcasting. Dot com, and I would be willing to give your listeners a 50% discount on any of those modules. There's three modules. Uh, if they would just contact me at my website at my uh, email address, Carrie at podcastfasttrack.com. All right, you guys, you heard it straight from Carrie, 50% off. So we'll make sure that that link is in there as well. So make sure that you email him, let him know that you heard about him and his program from RCU Women. And if you haven't connected with us, what the heck? All right, subscribe below, red button, easy peasy. You know how to do it. Also go over to rcuwomen.com. You're missing out. And if you want to connect with me, you can connect with me at laneysullivan.com. And Carrie, thank you once again for being on with us today. And make sure you guys go connect with him and all of his links and all of his freebies and resources. 